Hi everyone, my name is Sarazin Shane. I'm on the Customer Acceleration Team for the Microsoft Purview Data Loss Prevention and Information Protection Team. Today I'll be discussing a very common customer ask and scenario that we're faced and give you some of the guidance and some of the places where you can go to get this information and what you are able to do to help address some of those concerns. And so the main scenario is basically how are we able to alert our users on infractions or violations of data loss prevention policies? And also, how can we ensure that those files are also labeled? And so within the Microsoft Purview portal, we do have a couple of different ways of doing this. We're split up with the data loss prevention side and then, of course, the additional side of going through and doing an auto labeling policy. So I'm going to jump on over to the bottom left here under solutions and click on data loss prevention. Within data loss prevention, let's jump on over to policies and then click on create policy. For the purpose of this exercise or this demo in general, we're going to click on custom so we have a little bit more control over what we're using for the example and uh, move forward to the next step, which is to just name it something, right? So for this one, let's do test for demo. Uh, that way we just have all the information overall. You can put a description as you can see in some of our other videos that we have, um, but Really for this purpose, we're just gonna name it. We won't save it um, and then jump on over here to our specific locations. So we do have several videos out there on the different components of data loss prevention um, locations that you can choose, but we're going to focus mainly on the use case of SharePoint this time and jump on over to the next tab here to go ahead and create and customize those advanced DLP rules, right? So let's do create a rule, let's give it a name, and then go over here to, into the conditions section here. So we're gonna go to conditions and then jump to content contains. So the use case is if there is sensitive information in any of those sites, right? So how can we notify a user? You'll click on add, let's do sensitive information types here, and let's click on, I'll just do Australia tax file number, something, right? So just a random number here. Uh, you're identifying this information type that's going to be within your SharePoint sites. And then you're going to have the option of taking actions, right? So if you go in the action here, you can restrict the access um, of being able to see who can access those files. So if you wanna make sure that this file is blocked from everybody accessing it, of course you can click on blocking everyone. As a heads up, when you do click on block everyone, that does not block the, the owner, the last modifier, as well as the site admin. Um, these folks will still have access. It'll block anybody else who is um, who just has access. So these main areas, main components of the, the users will stay in having access, which is good. You don't want to lock yourself out, right? And then of course, being able to block external users and then anybody who has the anyone with the link option as well. So these are some of the actions you can take. And now in terms of being able to notify the customer or excuse me, the user, if you scroll down, you have the ability to send alerts and um, give, give an alert whenever there's something that is matched, right? So if you want to go through and send some of these matches, you are able to send send it uh, based off of any time there is an activity that matches the rule, or you can send it whenever you have a specific volume that is being um, being matched within the the overall process, right? And then you can also do the things like the um, being able to have the incident report that is being sent out. And then of course the incident report will have a lot more of this information as well. So you're able to go through and give these notifications. In addition, um, the same thing applies to the area of just having a, a policy tip pop up and being able to notify that user as well and being able to go through and doing a little bit more so on the user end of um, giving these users the, the guidance that they need and that you know, this is this is what's happening and this is what has been uh, violated for that matter. So this will happen whenever this file is there, whenever it is detected as a violation and it's a great way to ensure that these users are also able to just get the get get this information and um, just know what the violation was done to. So 
that's a, a good place to be able to do a little bit more, at least on the policy side of DNS prevention, and have the notifications once those files actually do have the violation of having this Australia fax, tax file number for that matter. Now, the other use case that follows through with this is um, how can we automatically add a label to it using the Microsoft Purview compliance portal, right? So in this case, within the data loss prevention side, your actions are limited to just what's available here, right? So you aren't able to go through and add in those labels here. However, that doesn't mean that it's not a capability. It's just it would be a follow up, follow up um, configuration that you do. So. I'm going to jump, up, jump over back into the Microsoft Purview portal and then, um, of course, I on the bottom left, click on information protection and then you get to the section where you can choose your labels, your label policies and do auto labeling. And so in this case, it would be an auto labeling policy within SharePoint side. You create a specific label itself, go on into your custom, um, make sure you click on custom policy here jump forward to the, the next side and um, be able to, of course, name it as well, right? And as you go through, choose your sites or your locations. We're on the use case of SharePoint, and we're going to choose our specific site here, move on over and do a, um, a rule set for, yeah, for the content, right? So it's similar to the data loss prevention side in the sense that you're choosing the, um, the conditions, which would be the what the content uh, contains. So We'll jump over into content contains and choose our sensitive information types. And I believe we chose the, I actually don't remember. I think it was a, yeah, it was the Australia tax file number. So we selected the Australia tax file number. And so anytime we have this popping up, you'll be able to do an auto labeling uh, policy within your SharePoint site. So let's click this, let's go ahead and save it validated, move on forward, and now the next step is to apply a label. So how will these files that have this Austra Australian um, sensitive information type um, be classified, right? So choose a label, go over here, and let's just choose confidential all employees. So we're going to jump on over, and now the final part before you do go through and finish this policy is to be able to decide if you want to, want to test it out now or later. In this situation, since this is the first time we are creating the policy, uh, you do have to run the policy in simulation mode. And the reason we do this is to ensure that you don't accidentally auto label everything in your files or everything in your folders to ensure that um, you, you don't make that mistake at the high level. So. You run in simulation mode, and once simulation mode completes, you do have matches that you can review to ensure that, yes, the sensitive information type is being correctly identified, and yes, I would like the, uh, the auto labeling to complete. So that's a simple walkthrough on how you can notify both admins and users on uh, different violations you have in your environment, as well as if you do find the sensitive information type within files in SharePoint, how you can create an auto labeling policy for this matter and um, be able to just take a take a look at some of those labels that are being applied. So thank you very much and I hope this was helpful.